Hello, this is James from Heretic Wargaming USA, and today I'm going to go through a Blightlord painting tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to um, essentially create a Blightlord from the basing onward. So I'm going to go over highlighting tips, I'm going to go over rusting, um, go over weathering effects, uh, nylic oxide, um, slime. And I'm going to show you guys how I do my slime bases. So uh, I'll go ahead and show you an example here, right? So this right here is a Blightlord Terminator that it was already finished. Boop. Oh, let's see. And so um, I don't do mine like some people where they just do the um, Nurgle's Rot pulled up. I do something different. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And we'll be right back and we'll get into the video. Alright, so welcome to Heretic Wargaming USA. So my name is James, and I'm going to go over uh, basically finishing a Blightlord Terminator. So this is actually a finished one that I did finish. Um, so we're going to actually start from after the base coat is on, and I'll go ahead and kind of cover uh, a bit of the colors that I used on the one that I'm going to finish. Um, hopefully I'll get around to basing it in this video, uh, showing you guys kind of how to do the ooze and the, um, basing that I did on this guy, but, uh, we'll see. Like I said, this is my very first video, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. So, let's see, let's get some focus going on here. Alrighty. So this right here is my, um, Blight Load Terminator that I'm going to be working on. So I based it with Abaddon Black for all the um, buggy bits right here, so you see his buggy arms and stuff like that. For the armor, I actually do a three-step process. So I start out with a very dark, it is Death Force Green from the Citadel line, and then I step it up uh, through, I think it's Elysian Camo, and then to Nurgling Green. Um, in between that though, so after I do the base coat of the um, Death World Forest, I actually will wash it uh, with Athonian Camel Shade, Camo Shade. So that's actually how you guys get these neat, um, sorry, my camera's a little out of focus there. So if you can see here, that's how you get the neat pocking and the dark um, crevices along with the highlighting there. So that's for the armor. That's my uh, armor combination. Everybody's slightly different for their Death Guard. Um, for the head, you can see here, all I've done is done a uh, pale flesh color, and then I washed it with Reichland flesh. All the teeth are done with a pale flesh color, and then they are wa washed with a ser Seraphim Sepia. For the cloak, it is just a very dark purple, and then I washed that with um, Drukhari Violet. For all the middle parts, so here on his shoulders, um, also the weapon here, I will do them in various shades of uh, of metallics. So I actually use um, bulk gun metal here, and then I wash it with non oil and agra agrax earth shade. And then for the um, golden bits down here, I actually use Balthastar gold. Sorry, I don't have the actual pots of paint anymore. Um, you'll see how I actually have put mine all in droppers. And then I actually step it up to a bronze or a copper finish after I've washed it with the Non Oil and the uh, Agrax Earthshade. And then all the um, tentacles and skulls. So here I got tentacles, right? And some dripping stuff. Ah. Like I said, first video, so I'm, I'm trying to get the camera angles done. Ah, there you go. So you can see kind of the drippy bits down in there. And those are all done in a neon green and then um, washed with Athonian camo shade, camo shade. So, And then for the flames, I'm going to show you guys how I do my flames. So the other one, I just um, did a pale white, like a bone color. And then I did null uh, oxide, so or nylic oxide. So let me go back to the old one, right? So if you do it that way, you guys will get this... Ah light like a light almost uh ethereal blue and i thought it looked pretty cool but um i actually picked up some of those glow paints that uh just came out for the night haunts and so here you can see i'm a terminator sorcerer 
that's the green and I thought that really really looked good so I figured um, I'm gonna actually use blue on the next guy so but we'll be doing that on this Terminator here so I'll show you guys kinda how to paint that so let me go ahead and get set up for the actual painting process and I'll be right back alright so the way I personally like to work it all right, so on to my Terminators. <clears throat> so this guy right here, um, I've already kind of done the dry brushing on the black. So whenever I dry brush black, I always use grays. In this case, it was a dark gray. Um, so this is my dark gray. You can see it almost looks black. So I only like to do one dry brush over black because uh, it shows up well enough that I don't, don't feel the need to do more. So the next part on this guy right here, uh, was that I did the uh, metal parts so I did like I said from Balthasar gold and then I stepped it up to a copper so that's how I get that nice shiny finish on it but it's still like nice and gritty like it should be for Death Guard so the chains were washed in a Nuln oil and then they were washed in a uh, Agrax Earthshade so the next part I was going to do and I had inspiration for this video because um, a lot of people don't really grime up their death guard to me enough, so. So I have a very, very, very light silver. So it was like the lightest silver they had. I think it was like silver fang or something like that. And all I use is Citadel paints. Uh, very, very rarely do I use anything else. And if I do not use a Citadel paint, I'll let you guys know, so. So I put a little, a couple little drops in here in my little wet palette right there. And so I'm going to go ahead and mix it up. Uh, where's my very thin brush? Where'd it go? This guy right here. So I like to use a nice pointed brush like this. And so what I'm going to do, because to me, metal parts generally aren't very shiny, you know? Um, once these guys are rolling around in the muck, they're Death Guard, you know, Nurgle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to just put a little tiny bit on the end. So here, you guys can see the little tiny bit on the end. And now what I'm going to do on my Death Guard Terminator here is I'm just going to lightly just kind of touch the chains on various parts. And so what this does is it kind of gives it a um, almost like scrapes or nicks on the guy can you guys see it yeah so like I said first first full video so I'm trying to um, get in the habit of letting you guys see what I'm doing because normally I'm just very good at just kind of doing my thing and see I don't really like how this paintbrush is doing the little nicks but um, hopefully it'll dry better than what it looks like right now. That could partially be because of this lighting too. It's new lighting, so... I'm just going to kind of put it all over a little bit. Here, let me bring this over here. So you guys can see more of what I'm doing. So I'm just kind of doing it anywhere that uh, I put bolt gun metal. And just do like little scrapes almost like their armor's chipped or um, it's gotten nicked in a fight. And me, I like when my paint just starts drying out and gets very, very thin. And so you guys might have a hard time seeing it here, but it, it gives like almost a, a look like it was scraped in battle. So, um, and I like that, you know, like I said, my death guard need to be gritty, gritty and manly. And then I'll also pick out a few, just a few of the rivets 
around them. So before this video I had washed them in um, Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil all over the metal bits. And so there we go. So at this point we've done just the silver. Alright, so let me find my good uh, brush and I'll be right on back. Alright, so now that I've done all the uh, metal bits, so like I said before the video I had done the, the copper right here. Let me lift this up a little bit because it's hard to see. Alright, there we go. That's much better. Alright, much better angle. So like I said, I've done um, all the metal here and I've done the uh, metal over here on his mace. I've kind of touched up all the metal bits here. So the next part I'm going to do is these bone bits. So bone, like I was alluding to earlier, I always use a pale flesh. I actually use the same uh, for every fleshy bit on the model. The reason for that is actually your wash is generally what's going to pick out between the um, flesh bits, so like his face, and then the bone bits. So if you do flesh with Reichland flesh, so I'll show you my, that's not, that's Agrax Earthshade, you don't need that. Um, well, let's talk about bone first. So bone is always going to be, like I said, a flesh shade, then seraphim sepia. If you do that, it always turns out very, very nice. And then for, um, that's Ducari Violet. So, note for next video to have my paint set up properly, right? Uh, so then I also use this, and then I just use Reichland Flesh, and then that's how I get my flesh tones, so. So the next thing I do is I actually, ah, they're actually, Flayed One Flesh is the one I use. So I have a little bit extra. This is to fill my pots back up. So I'm going to use Tyrant Skull. So Tyrant Skull is great for anything that's bony. So in this case, um, we've got the teeth on his arm. We've got the little claws poking out on the bottom here. The skull. Sorry, the skull. And I actually like to paint his little um, armor panels that are folded down here. I like to paint those a bone color too. So, so what we're gonna do is we're just going to take a little bit of my pot here. I just put enough on the edge of my brush to coat it. See? And so I have a napkin. I always use a napkin. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of dry it off to the point where I can barely see it on the napkin. I'll actually hit a little bit on the base, so see this is way too dry. So it should show up at least slightly on the base. Let me do this again. So it shows up very, very lightly on my base. And now I'm just going to make sure I'm in the camera. I'm going to very, very lightly hit my bone. So all you want it to do is to show up on the elevated portions of the bone. You do not want it to show up all over the place because then it's going to wash down the effect of the um, wash that you put on earlier. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit more. It seems like I ran out right before I hit the, uh, the armor panels on the side here. There we go. And so once I feel like, sorry, I gotta get it in my other light. So once I feel like I've gotten it all, so I need to get the teeth. Use a thinner brush for the teeth. Making a painting tutorial is a little harder than I thought it was going to be. But hey, if this helps at least one person to paint their Death Guard or uh, whatever model you're choosing to paint, then it's awesome to me, you know? I don't do it for myself, I do it for other people. Because I know how I paint, so. So it's going to be kind of hard to see the effect on this guy, so I'm going to show you the effect on uh, a different Terminator, because he has a lot more bony bits. 
So you can see right here, um, ah, sorry, my camera's blurring up on me. So you can see right here, the um, inside of the bone bits is very dark. The, high, uh, the elevated portions right here are very, very light. So I like that, that effect there. And then you also get that kind of transition color from the um, fleshy color. So, and that's created between the wash and you highlighting. Now, if you obviously just want a super gritty look, then don't highlight, um, but that's kind of on you. I like to highlight. I think it gives a very good, um, when I started, I didn't like to highlight. I thought highlighting was kind of dumb and what does it do? And, but, uh, it actually creates a very good effect on most models. I don't know if this light's too bright. Maybe that's why y'all can't see. That's too, too bright. No, no, no. Okay. So we'll just kind of do it like that. All right. Cool. So the next part we're going to do is all the um, dark or the, the greeny bits here. So I actually, so sometimes, so for example, like these neon green bits, right? So I've already um, washed him in Ethonian camo shade. And so you can see it kind of gives a transition look between the super light green and it kind of picks out the little bumps on his arm. This light's way too bright. There we go. Hopefully that'll help put it away some. All right. So you can see um, more of the details, right? Well, at the same point, you kind of want those highlights. So I will actually highlight with the exact same color that was my base color. So I'm going to grab a little tiny bit of green, dry it off on my thing. And I'm just going to lightly, lightly, lightly just kind of trace the area that I'm trying to highlight. This is also the same technique you would use if you're going to hi uh, edge highlight. Generally, you're just going to use a um, like a base color, and then you'll edge highlight in like the next highest or the next lightest shade, and that's what gives you guys like the how the GW models are all edge highlighted and nice and clean looking. But me, like I said, Nurgle, I don't like. I don't like clean. And so I'm just kind of, here I'm actually edge highlighting the tongue and the stuff coming out of his leg. And same with the ooze coming out of the tube here. So now we got a nice little highlight. So it's a very light effect. Um, here I'm going to bring him up close so you guys can see. Let's see, there we go. So it's a very, very light effect on it, but it still gives you that nice highlighting look. Um, you still get the different colors, the different shades, and it, it picks it out very nicely. So, um, let's see, is that the way I, oh, I'm going the wrong way. Ah, the way too high. There we go. And so I did that for all the light green bits. Now for me, I like to make him look very nerdly, so all these green bits are going to eventually get some um, of our good old Nurgle's rot going. Alright, so we've highlighted the weapon, we've gotten all the metal bits here, we've gotten the green bits, I've gotten all the skulls, gotten the metal here, um, so usually I don't highlight tubes, I think tubes just stay the way that they are. So next we're going to have to go ahead and do this cloak. So for the cloak, so this is actually my purple um, solution and people seem to like it pretty well. So you do a very, very super, super, super dark purple. I think that's my super dark. Yeah, that's my super dark. If you see, I actually put the uh, drop of the paint on top. That way I can tell because the difference between this one and this one is very minimal. Actually, on camera, it looks very different, but <laughs> up close, they look uh, very minimal. So I use my super dark purple. Then I go ahead and use my Drukhari violet. So it's already to this point. 
Now, the only crappy part about Drukhari Violet is it tends to pull and um, give you a very shiny look. So I don't know if you guys can see on my cloak here. It's actually incredibly, incredibly shiny, and I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So I actually do a dry brush for my cloaks. And I do a three-step process. So I'm going to use a um, next step up of purple. Like I said, I can't remember these purple names. I know this is Jean Steeler purple, which is always my finishing color. Got to shake it up all oh, nice and neat. So that's the only crap part about droppers is the paint does settle and separate. So I actually, as you see right here, this is my white. And you can see the water and the paint has separated. So you got to shake them up pretty good before you use them. But I do recommend that you transfer all your paints to a dropper. Especially for you new guys. Alright. So I got my purple down. I'm going to grab my flat brush. I love my flat brush. I know it's supposed to be for washing. But uh, I use it for just about everything. And see, I'm going to show you my napkin here. Where's my bit? So you guys can see, I get it to where it basically speckles on the, the thing. That's how dry it should be. And now basically you're just going to run it over the cloak. So because this cloak um, has these very high points, I'm just going to kind of go um, horizontally across it. Never go vertically, because if you go vertically, what's going to happen is you're going to get down in those crevices. And then that's actually going to fill in those details that you're trying to um, highlight. But on the outside here, you can go vertically, right? Because there's not really any divots or anything that you're trying to pick out. So like I said, go horizontally. And then you should have a nice color transition of purples. Bottom of the cloak. Definitely pick it out. Now, some people like to sub-assemble models. I am not a sub-assembly guy. Um, reason for that is because I am not the best painter in the world. And so this actually allows me to hide some of those flaws in my models. So the reason why I like to use Citadel paints, which a lot of people don't like, um, is they dry very, 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 very quickly. So literally, just as soon as I got the dry brush on there, it's about as dry as I need it to go ahead and start the next layer purple. So I'm going to do the next exact same thing. So see, I didn't mix this up enough. And I want to kind of show you guys what happens. So if you don't mix it up enough, so this is actually the purple I'm trying to use right here, you can actually see a lot of black in there. And so what that is, is it's the separation of the paint. So um, I'm going to use my brush here, and it, luckily it was enough that uh, I could just kind of mix it up, and it actually turned out nice. So yet again, get it to where it spackles. And I'm going to do the exact same technique, like I said, horizontal. Horizontal across the cloak. Buzz buzz, somebody buzz buzzed me. Who buzz buzzed my phone? Okay. Just gotta make sure it's nothing important from work, you know? Worst thing ever is when somebody from work calls you. Alrighty. So my purple's done. So I'm gonna actually show you guys kind of what I was talking about here. Ah, let's get it up up close there. Come on camera, are you going to show the purple transition for me? And so me, like I said, I like to muck it up. Um, when I'm on the next part of the model, I'm going to actually muck up that cloak and make it look um, very uh, dirty looking. Alright, so now it's time for the flesh.
All right. So now we're going to go ahead and do his flesh, right? So we've highlighted the armor, um, we've highlighted all these plates, and now I'm on to his head. So, like I said, I use the um, the same flayed one flesh, and then I use the Ryklin flesh shade. And then whenever you highlight um, bony bits, use Tyrant Skull. Now whenever I highlight fleshy bits, I'm going to use Eldar flesh. So it's a lot pinker than the Tyrant Skull. And the beauty of that, and I will actually show you guys the difference, right? So if you're not a big painter or whatever, so you can see my Eldar flesh is much pinker and this is much uh, more like a pale bone white. <clears throat> so for the Eldar flesh, and I want to pick out um, certain bits, so obviously he's normal, right? And so he's not going to be looking like a normal human being. So kind of like how I showed you to do with the bone, this is actually not a good paintbrush for this. Sorry, grab the wrong paintbrush. So I like to use my flat brush, my long flat brush. So I have a short flat brush and a long flat brush. Use a short, or my long flat brush to um, go ahead, I'm gonna smooth out. And because I just took this out of the water, it's a little wet. So I need to dry it out some. So now it's nice and dry, and I'm going to go ahead and just kind of bleh all over his face. And so this is going to give me kind of like a um, pale, splotchy look. Now, you're going to notice I messed up. I got some on my armor right here. So we're going to cover that up when we get to the, um, I'll call it the mucking up portion. I like the mucking up portion. That's the most fun. So he's got two eyes here. I like to use red for my eyes for Nurgle. Um, I mean, he's kind of human, but... So I just need, like, one drop of red. And the thinnest brush I have. I'm just going to come in here and just... Boop, right on his eye. And boop, right on his eye on the other side. So you can see, he's got two little red eyes. Now like I said, Nurgle. Nurgle does not look like a normal human being, right? So, because he has been washed um, with multiple shades of a pale color, now I can come in here with some green. Uh, my wonderful wife came in here to show me something neat. So, ta-da, my focus is working now. So let's bring this guy up close for you guys to see. So you can see that his face is, um, it's pale, but it's still, it's like greenish. Because I wanted him to look kind of, uh, I don't know, undead almost. So um, I've got that nice gradient change uh, between the pale flesh and then some green in there. So it makes him look very zombie-like. So at this point, I have finished all my highlights. I do not highlight my tubes just because um, that's just kind of personally something I do. People don't normally notice those things. But I am going to highlight these little balls on his uh, shoulder there because I like to make those pick out or stand out. <clears throat> so I've got a very, very super light yellow right here. Um, uh, my focus is finally working. Yay! So, so I get some pale or some light yellow on here. And I'm going to go ahead and So for this one, I'm not going to use my napkin because I just want to get a very light, light, light because I'm almost like edge highlighting the top of these balls. And the purpose of this is just to kind of give them um, highlight just kind of makes it pop, you know. And that's also why I like my basing. Uh, with the toxic ooze. So I'm going to actually show you guys my toxic ooze at the end of this video. Uh, we'll go over some basing. Um, so I'm actually going to use my Demon Prince of Nurgle here. So he is fully painted, right? But I did forget to um, base him properly like all the rest of my guys. 
So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to. So this is my Terminator um, Sergeant. So let's see, let's get the, the focus working there. So I'm going to show you guys how to do some nice cool ooze. Yeah, ooze. Woo! I like ooze. You like ooze? I like ooze. All right. All right. So there we go. So now we have my nice highlighted Terminator uh, with a flail. So the next thing we're going to do is muck them up. Like I said, I love to muck them up. So to muck them up, you're going to need some Nurgle's Rot. You're going to need, uh, that's not the right one. Typhus Corrosion, where are you? Hi there. Some good old Typhus Corrosion. Oh, see? There we go, got my focus back. You're gonna need some Typhus Corrosion. There's our Typhus Corrosion. Then you're going to need some Rise of Rust. Rise of Rust is the man. And then you're also going to need some light brown. Uh, in this case, I have a, I think it's khaki brown or something like that, that I like to use. Because we're dealing with some corrosion, I like to use some Nilac Oxide as well. So I'm going to go ahead and shake up my brown a little bit. Now the reason why you want brown is for my cloak. So like I said, I like to muck up my cloak, right? But it's not going to be rusty. It's cloth. So you're going to want to, um, when you muck it up, so we're going to muck up the bottom here, right? You're going to go ahead and do like almost like a dry brush of light brown. That way it looks like dirt. As opposed to rusty stuff. So first I'm going to go ahead and do my Nurgle's Rot stuff. Reason for that is because this stuff is um, pretty easy to work with. And I don't really need too, too much of it. Come on, stupid focus. There we go. So we'll go ahead and grab a bit of Nurgle's Rot. And so here, let's see, focus in. And so because this is a tentacle, right, we're just going to kind of brush it lightly kind of all around it. I like to get it up here on the teeth. Come on, man. All right, sorry about that. Um, technical difficulties, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab all this ooze, this, um, like I said, Nurgle's Rot, and I'm just gonna kinda drench his tentacles in it. Now, me personally, I like to put some around the tentacles too, so that way the armor's just kinda got some oozing on it, because it's not going to be clean, you know? It's an herbal we're talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get some on the, the boot there. A little bit on the tongue. Drop my little remote. Alright. And so... I love that about Nurgle's Rot, so... I just disconnected my remote because it was annoying me. Um, so I got some dripping off there, some up there. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and kind of put some down in here too. Because obviously if he's got some tentacles and stuff going on, he's, he's probably not going to be very clean up in here too. So get some pulling up in there inside of his armor. So that's our Nurgle's Rot part. So me being an instructor, you know, for the United States Air Force, um, I'm used to asking, you know, anybody got a question? Any questions going on? So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment uh, on my video or on my Patreon. Send me an email and I will answer whatever questions you have. So the next part I'm going to do here, good old typhus corrosion. Typhus corrosion. So when you're working with this, especially if you're new to working with it, it is very, very gritty. 
and it pulls up very, very, very badly. So me personally, I like to take, and that's the wrong brush for this, I like to take a frayed brush. So let's see if it'll focus in on my frayed brush. So sorry about this. Oh man, this camera is just being really annoying. All right, so I like to take a fried, frayed brush before I do this. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, if you use a flat brush, let me go ahead and fray this a little bit more. Um, if you use a flat brush, it will pull up real good. Um, and that's part, part of why a lot of people use this. But me, I like to make my dude look like he's been, you know, walking through. I mean, he's, he's at war right now, so. Go ahead and dry that off a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead, so I've put ginger amount of uh, typhus corrosion, I've kind of tapped it off on a towel, and I'm going to just kind of splotch it around the model. So if you get it on something that you've painted previously, that's fine. And the reason for that is because it's supposed to be dirty, right? And if you wanted a clean model, you would not be doing this. So skip this step if you want a cleaner looking Terminator. So I'm going to go ahead and round this. Like I said, for our cloak, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put a little bit around it. Now, this is also why I do not paint the um, the flail yet, because you are going to get some of this corrosion and stuff on it. And that would be very, very crappy if you were trying to uh, paint it, or if you had already painted it, right? All right, so that's my typhus corrosion. So luckily this stuff dries pretty quickly. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring them up close here. Let's see if my focusing will work. All right. So my autofocus is not working again. So I'm just gonna kind of bring them up here. Um, that should be close enough for you guys to see this stuff. So you guys can see there's lots of just splotches of dirt all over him now. Um, I like it to look very intermittent. So down here you guys can see there's a bit down here on the bottom, a little bit up, you know, and got it up here on his uh, little vent in the back. Um, and I like to just kind of get it all over. Now when Typhus Corrosion dries, and I actually forgot to get the weapon, so let me go ahead and get the weapon some. Because weapons, I like to heavily corrode them. And the reason for that is because it's probably the most likely thing to corrode other than the armor, right? Thinking logically, you know. I like realistic models. Or as realistic as possible. I'm not the best painter, by the way. I'm sure there's other guys out there on the YouTubes that is way better. So, um... Yep, see, of course, it, it didn't track me the whole time that I did that. But, let's see, let's go ahead and, ah, yes, there we go. So, now you can see, right, my weapon is highly, highly, highly corroded. Right there. Got it all over the chains, uh, got it all over the metal bits, all over the armor. And then, like I said, I like to hit the cloak up, too. So, when I hit the cloak on the back here, um, there's a little bit there in between the tears and then all over the bottom. Now when the typhus corrosion uh, dry, when the typhus corrosion dries, it's going to dry grainy. And the purpose of that grain is so that way when you guys um, dry brush something else on top of it, it's actually what gives you a very nice rusty look or a very nice um, dirt look. And so some people like to just pull up Typhus Corrosion and just leave it there. And that's that, right? But um, I'll tell you, it doesn't, it doesn't add 
depth to the model if you do it that way. It just looks like a brown, almost a, like a poo stain. Am I allowed to say poo? I guess I'm allowed to say poo, I don't know. Alrighty, so, let's see. So like I said, I like Citadel paints because they dry very, very, very quickly. So at this point, I'm touching the model right, and my typhus corrosion, eh, a little bit on the weapon, is still wet. But for the most part, my typhus corrosion is dry. So a lot of people like to ask me what my rust technique is. Because rust is a pivotal part of being Nurgle. So the first thing I do is I dry brush some riser rust. So you'll see I go ahead and I um, sponge some off. And I'm going to hit anywhere that I got on the armor. Definitely metal parts. Definitely, definitely metal parts. Even metal parts that I did not touch with the typhus corrosion, I'll hit. And so the reason why we did the, um, so hopefully you've watched this video all the way through, but the reason why we did the um, scraping on the all the metal bits with your light lighter colors is because it kind of gives a contrast between the rusted, you know? Because if you've ever looked at a rusted car, it's not 100% just rust. There is bits of metal and stuff showing through. And so that's kind of the idea when you do it this way, right? Is that not only is it rusted, but you're still seeing like kind of what it originally was. So hopefully you guys are seeing this pretty good. I tend to get pretty into my rust because I like rusting models. And so I get it anywhere that I've touched. Definitely any metal bits, right? And so you almost want to have a powdery, um, powdery look to it. So when I finish this video, uh, I'll do an up close on the model and just kind of show you guys um, what our finished product looks like. Uh, so I know I haven't mentioned it, but please, 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 when my patron Patreon page is ready, um, please, please, please donate. That'd be nice of you. Help me buy some maybe better lighting. Some studio lighting would be nice. So at this point, we have dry brushed our riser rust. Um, we've got all of our rusted bits, right? My weapon has dried up. Um, riser rust dries very, very quickly. Now, the next part for my rust is I take riser rust again, and I actually just pull it up on, a, um, on my wet palette here, and then I add some water. So it should look almost like a um, super watered down orange. Now, the cool thing about riser rust is when it dries, this way it's going to be like a very pale orange and I add this to my rusted areas because it almost gives it that watery um, watery poxed look like uh, water's pulled up somewhere but it couldn't really get away and so it's starting to rust the area so you get a good combination of different rust techniques, right? And so I, I especially like to do this watered down, um, this watered down rhizos rust, kind of in cracks, around things, kind of where you would expect water to pull up, you know, and not be able to escape. And so you just kind of add it everywhere that you've already riser rusted. Now, some people don't like to null oxide or nylic oxide after this. They just like the rusted look. And the reason why I do nylic oxide is because I think it just gives a cool um, contrast to the rusted. So logically, you would think, you know, oh, hey, if, if copper is rusting or whatever, um, it would just have the, the green like it was starting to rust and you would not get the green and the rusted together, which is true. But we're talking about models here, so. 
whatever looks cool. That's kind of the rule of cool. So at this point I have splotched on my orange. Now the orange will take a little bit longer to dry, but uh, because I'm not really waiting on it to dry, I'm going to go ahead and do my next part, which is some nylic oxide. Or, yeah, nylic oxide. <laughs> now this stuff um, is super watery, but if you put it on, it will dry like almost like a pure blue, kind of like how my flame did, right? So here, I'll go back to my flame, dude. So if you can see, right, oh, there we go. So it dries almost like a pure blue. So with the flame, right, I wanted it to, that, that was kind of the whole purpose of putting the oxide on there. But when you're doing like metal, you want to almost have none. So I almost have like zero on my brush and then I just kind of touch around areas. I like to use a, a very thin brush when I'm doing this. I just kind of splotch it everywhere. Everywhere that there's rust on the metal parts. I do not do it on the armor though. And that's just a me thing. I, I mean, you can do it on the armor if you really want to. This is just a me thing. This will be a neat first video, though. So hopefully you guys are enjoying it. I know I'm. my camera works probably not the best, you know, by myself. My wife did show me some cool tricks though, so um, in the future, hopefully that'll help out on my battle reports and stuff like that. Alright, so I'm satisfied kind of where I hit the blue up. Um, like I said, I don't do too, too much of this stuff. I mean, if you really want to, you could pull it up in all the, uh, the holes and the pock marks and the, the whatever's in the armor. Um, Looks like you guys didn't see a lot of that, but that's fine. That's fine. All right. And so at this point, I have done pretty much everything except for the light, light brown. And so this is just going to be dry brushed on the cloak. So this is where, um, if you guys want to pull up a lot of typhus corrosion, it will probably help you because it'll grab the uh, the light brown very, very well. Get back out my towel. Very, very, very well. And so I just kind of dry brush it definitely around um, wherever you guys hit with typhus corrosion on the cloak. The edge. And just kind of just gingerly put it in there, right? So what it should like look like is that the cloak is dirty. That's the whole idea, right? So I've just got some dirt kind of draped on the cloak um, from him kind of trudging through the mud. Alright. So, we'll have to definitely work on the camera work, so. But I'm going to go ahead and take down the camera now. That way we can get a up close of what we have accomplished. Swivel it around. All right. And so, here's our Belight Lord Terminator, right? So, well, let's get even closer on him, right? Because you all want the close up. So you can see that. His nice and oh, is this where I can focus in? There we go. So you guys can see, right? He's nice and grody. Ugh. All the oozy bits there. We got some nylic oxide there. And then this is where that pulling um, 
the pulling of the rust kind of comes in. So you can see how the cloak is very dirty. And so this is pers just how I personally like to do it. So I like to make my chains and everything very rusty. Because, um, I mean, these guys are, are thousands of years old, so they shouldn't be very clean. And there's my um, skull work, and we got some oozing going on in there. So I didn't highlight the uh, eyes, and that's just kind of a, a me thing. Um, I'm not very good at it, so I try not to... Uh, and I also don't have very many paints, so here, let's... So that's actually how many paints I use to paint this guy, but that's literally all I have. So you can actually see that my paint uh, station is pretty much empty, so... Okay, so the last part of our Terminator. So I showed you guys how to rust. I showed you guys all the other stuff. Um, so we're going to go ahead and paint his smoke. So what you're going to need for this, if you're going to do it my route, so my pot is actually very, very wet. It's way too wet to actually use. So you're going to need a pail. Um, here I'm actually using that flayed one flesh again. And the reason why you don't want to use a... You could use a pure white, I guess. Should I use pure white? You know what? We'll use a pure white for this, this time. So we'll go ahead and use a pure, pure white. So super, super pure white. So this is the one I showed you guys earlier that needs a good amount of shaking to get it mixed up. And I believe this is, yeah, this is how I did the uh, Terminator Sorcerer I showed you guys earlier is I use pure white as opposed to um, the bone white. Now the bone white you can use, I would use that if you're going to do like uh, that nylic oxide for your flames. And the reason for that is because the oxide is so, so very light that you kind of need something to almost bulk up the color. Otherwise it's going to be way too light. So we're just going to go ahead and you're going to paint all the flames that nice pure white. So, sorry. Got it out of the film there. So for the pure white, you're just going to make sure that um, so like I said, this is the very last thing I'm going to paint on this guy. So you want to make sure you don't mess up any of the rusting that you did on the weapon. Definitely don't mess up uh, any other parts of the weapon. It's fine if you get some, um, some mess ups. So here I kind of got it a little bit inside of the ball. And that's fine because when I do the um, effect, I'm going to kind of drag it up onto the rusting a little bit. Alright, almost got it, almost got it. Ah, yeah. So for the white, you're going to need to do multiple coats. So here I'm just showing you guys kind of the first coat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop after I finish this first coat. Do a second coat, then let it dry. And drying, like I said, for Citadel Pates, doesn't take long. It'll take probably five minutes for it to dry. Which is nothing, really, when you think about it. And then I'll come back and I'll show you guys how to um, do the last part. So there's our white flames. Well, like I said, one more coat. And then we'll come back. So like I said, um, two coats of white on your flames. Right there. And so the, for this one I'm going to use Night Hot Glow. Um, so for the Terminator Sorcerer. So as you can see right here, I use the... Um, Hex Wreath Flame, and then I'll show you the other Terminator once more. 
So then we got this other Terminator, so you see it's very light, and I use the Nylic Oxide, but like I said, put that over like a bone color. Um, so we'll just kind of do it like that. That's the Nylic Oxide one. So in this case, we're going to use Hex Wraith Flame. Now when you use these glow paints, so I don't know if my flames are fully dry, they're not, but yeah, they'll be fine. So you're going to pull, pull this a lot. So it should be very, 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 very pooly. And so this is where I said it's fine if you guys get a little bit inside of um, parts of the flame that you didn't mean to. Because when you guys are pulling this on there, um, this is where it's going to kind of cover up those blemishes that you did. And we all make mistakes. Go ahead and adjust the camera, that way you guys can see kind of what I'm doing some more. So like I said, we're, we're just going to use lots and lots of this Hex Wraith Flame. Now if you think it's still too light, go ahead and use a second coat when it dries. Um, me personally, I like just the one coat. It looks fine. It looks fine. And then if you missed um, getting any white on something, so like there's some parts deep in here, because I pre-assemble before I paint, that uh, it won't actually touch. I mean, if you're trying for pro painted, don't watch my videos. I'm not pro paint. Hello, but this will get you to a good mid, I'd say above a tabletop standard. Definitely above tabletop standard. I mean, I wouldn't spend an hour telling you how to paint a Blight Lord if we were going tabletop, you know? So for you guys that are just trying for tabletop, it's three colors minimum. Most people just do like a base coat, edge some armor, call it a day. Get yourself in a tournament somewhere. Alright. Let's see. And that's the problem with me pre-assembling the model too. It's really hard to get down in there. To get the back side of the, the flame. Go between the legs. Alrighty. Cool beans. And there we go. So then when this dries, which it will dry, and I'm going to go ahead and show you the three terminators next to each other. And so there you go, right? So I kind of like having the three different colors myself. Um, I like the green because, you know, if he's a sorcerer. He's supposed to be casting spells. I like the blue one. And then the dark blue one, because uh, on the table, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, I'm going to swing, and you're like, I'm going to take it on the, the Blight Lord Terminator with the flail, or which one? So I'll be like the one with the dark flames, the one with the light flames. So um, that's a, a personal opinion of mine. So. so now we've got this guy painted, right? So at this point, we would normally base him. And um, so you can actually see between these all right so welcome back um so like i said whenever you're basing your models so in this case i did the sterling battlemire so i like the basing paints from uh citadel a lot uh the reason for that is because they tend to dry pretty good and they actually goop on very very well so um here i'm going to actually show you guys an up close of this guy's base there we go. So this is actually Sterling Battlemire, and then all it is is highlighted with um, some uh, Tyrant Skull. 
And then for the rocks, these rocks right here, they were um, little chalk bits. You can buy them from Gale Force 9. I have a little tub of them. And I spray paint them white. Then I do a dark gray. So the same dark, oops, sorry, the same dark gray that I used for the bug bits on my Terminator. And then I use a super light gray. And then once I do the Sterling Battlemire, I just kind of muck up around it right. And then I just kind of dry brush it with the um, Tyrant Skull. That way it looks all cohesive like it's supposed to be there, right? That it's been there all along. And so this Demon Prince that's stomping around on a battlefield um, has all that muck everywhere. So to begin, so this is how I do my basing. And so, uh, like I said, I was, as an example, right? Uh, that's actually not a good example, that's an old guy. Well, let's use my footed bullet drone right here. So my footed bullet drone, um, if you guys are a common guy on Reddit, you might have seen him. Uh, so these are examples of my slime pools. So you can see, I like to have multiple colors of slime in there. I don't like to just do the uh, Nurgle pits that you see everywhere, where it's just literally, they take Nurgle's rot and just pull it up somewhere, and then that's their pool, and that's that. To me, that's kind of lazy. So we're not going to be lazy. So this is where I'm going to actually use this. This is Tamira, sorry, yeah, Tamaya uh, acrylic paint. It is a green glaze. So be very, very careful when you're using this. It is very messy and can ruin a carpet or something very, very quickly. I'm also going to use the neon green that I used for all my tentacles and things like that. And then the good old Nurgle's Rot. So you're going to do a three-stage process here. And you're going to want to do this very, very quickly. So the first thing I'm going to do is shake up my neon. I'm going to go ahead and open my Tamaya glaze. Or Tamaya glaze. Go ahead and shake that up a little bit. Um, whenever you open it, it's going to be very crusty. So make sure you uh, just kind of, so you see how it's very oozy. Set it somewhere. I'm going to actually set it on my wet palette. Yeah, I got some stuff on my lock. It also smells very, very strongly, so. And then you're going to have your Nurgle's Rot. I'm just going to kind of open that off to the side here. So you're going to have both of those open. Go ahead and get your um, green squirted out on your whatever your palette is. So if you do not have a palette and you're just using it straight from the pot, I highly recommend you guys get a palette. It helps tremendously, especially when you guys start doing more advanced paint jobs. Oops. Now I have really crappy brushes so they the ends pop off, but I like them. They're from Hobby Lobby. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my neon green. So, yeah, this is a very key part, so I want to make sure that y'all can see it very, very well. Let's go ahead and zoom in as far as possible. Alright, so what I'm going to do make sure you guys can see it, is I'm going to pull up the green kind of wherever you want it to be, All right? Now you want to be quick about this because when you are doing this next part, you want this green to be still wet, has to be wet. And this is how you're going to get the cool blending effect that uh, I love so much. Now you don't need too, too much of this, but you can see it's already like kind of drying, so. All right, so now I've got it on there. So now you're gonna take your Tamaya Glaze. Do not clean your paintbrush. Just grab Tamaya Glaze. And you're going to pull it around. So what should happen is it should mix with the um, wet, the wet light green. And then you're also going to take more Tamaya Glaze and put it on top. That way it doesn't mix with the t the uh, green, if that makes any sense. Sorry, I got to do this pretty quick because as it dries, it, uh, it'll it mess it up. So you can see, so see how I'm getting the multiple colors? Go ahead and drip some more of the green in there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do this front puddle. So this guy was already dull coated and everything, so um, this is kind of just a way to mix him in 
more with the rest of the army because his base was a little too clean. All right, so at this point, you're going to clean it off, clean off your brush. So that's why you wanted to get that part done really, really fast. Uh, there we go. Alright. I won't edit that part out because y'all... Alright. So clean your brush very, very thoroughly. You can uh, pack up your Tamiya Glaze at this point or whatever you want to do. Uh, so at this point, you're going to take your Nurgle's Rot. So your Tamiya Glaze needs to be wet still. And you're going to pull up your Nurgle's Rot. So what it'll do is it'll give this cool like a almost like a pus look. It's the best way to describe it. And you want to make sure that it's so don't pull it up too much, like kind of spread it out. So it should look almost like a um a mix, right? And so what'll happen is you'll get the different the glaze, you'll get the um, Nurgle's Rot, you'll get the neon green, and they'll all dry at different rates, and they'll dry uh, just different colors all together, right? And then that's how you get this neat pulling effect, like that. And so you'll get like the dark green on the outside, and kind of mixed in the middle, and then you'll get the Nurgle's Rot kind of pulling in the middle. And to me, it just looks really neat. Um, it pulls the models together, right? So I actually have all my pox walkers painted this way. I have this guy, my bloat drone, painted the same way, right? So I did all my rusting and stuff per my guide here. So my rusting and my nylic oxide and stuff like that, you guys can apply it to really any model. And so you'll just kind of sit your guy off to the side and he should dry. And then you'll have a nicely painted model and a nicely painted base. So while I clean up, um, I'm going to go ahead and close this stuff up and we'll get to the outro. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Um, like I said, it's my very first video, putting it together from beginning to end. I know there was a lot of hiccups, some technical hiccups, and I apologized a lot. So. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, it can only get better from here, right? And uh, I'll come back at you guys with some more tutorials. I believe the next one I'm going to do is going to be how to paint blood letters in a very, very quick fashion. Because um, me, I actually have 30 blood letters that are hanging out and they really need it. So uh, please stay tuned and thank you for watching.